How's everyone feeling this morning? I said, pray for God, everybody. How many know that we have an intention of God? I feel like this morning, and you're so able, what you do is you know what this morning, what you feel like. you know that God, who's ready to be praised, I don't know what to tell you this morning, I don't know what I'm 
Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I'm not alone. No matter what I go through, I'm not alone. Not by myself. But he's always with me. And that's something we can get comfort in the fact that God promised never to leave us nor forsake us. No matter what comes to my life, I can shout the victory because he's with me. Amen. As we call the church to worship, I'm going to ask you to stand with us. Amen. As we move on. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, as we proudly look at our response to reading. Amen. We thank God for all of you, for one of you who saw it, not robbed by the great union church and hang out with us, amen, on this particular Sunday, amen. As we are preparing for all that God has for us, we thank God for all of you. We have your Bible, as bad as our technician who's fixing us up, making sure we're good to go. Everybody doing all right today? Amen, 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 amen. Amen. This, this two or three of y'all doing all right. How about the rest of us? Amen. 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 Now, Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter. You got got me, but Charles. Look how it reads. It says, "And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and chosen this place to myself for a house." From sacrifice. Or if I send testers among my people. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways altogether, and then will I forgive their sin. With the heal of that land, the word of God for the people of God. God had a blessing to read it and hear it to tear it out of His holy and His divine word. Amen. Felicia, I know you're behind me, and therefore, uh, because you're already up here, and we're going to ask her to come and render us a heartfelt welcome to all those who are joining with us. Amen. Virtually, joining with us in person. Amen. Good morning again. I hope everyone is still feeling all right this morning in the service. Amen. Amen. You are always welcome here to Great Union, where we are located at 525 in the wonderful city of Perry, Georgia. Whether you are here in person or you are, or you are joining with us through our Facebook live feed, you are always welcome. Also, we have Bible study every Wednesday at noonday. And if you can't make it to noonday Bible study, you can always take us back here at 645, same thing, Facebook, or in person. And we want you to know that our doors are always open 
here at the Great Union. So, um, do we have any visitors this morning for the first time? All right. So, um, everybody, is, we all family, right? Amen, amen. As always, when I like to do well, I like to give an encouraging word. And my encouraging word today is to remain faithful. With whatever it is that you're enduring in life, whatever it is that you're enduring, just remain faithful. Because you only have to have the faith of a mustard seed. And we know how small a mustard seed is. And if you trust God enough to keep uh, doing what He is doing, because we know that our God is way bigger than any situation that we could ever have or we could ever go through. So just keep that little must receive those faith and stay faithful to whatever it is that you're going through. And let's always do a welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Thank you so much. Be the offering. But we never know. We never know, amen, what God will desire of us even on Sunday morning. Amen. We're going to ask now our children and our uh, those who are part of our ministry will start their transition. Amen. And to stay in that symbol there. Uh, amen. So we want to give them an opportunity. Uh, let me just share with you about William Pastor and comments. We, we thank God for uh, the fact that God has blessed us, that we are continuing to seek uh, to be empowered by the Christ, that we have this mandate to evangelize. Part of our business statement the lost, building them up through our ministry and equipping them for the work uh, of the kingdom of God. Let us continue as we know uh, that our, again, uh, the uh, experiences through our COVID uh, is getting better, but we're still not out of uh, the harm's way yet. So we're going to ask you to continue to do all you can to stay safe, amen, not only in the church, but also stay safe uh, going forward. Uh, I know football season is in front of us. I know we have a lot of things that we are getting back to doing. But please, man, please let us know that COVID is still present. It's still real among us. And we've got to do our part to protect ourselves. Also, too, uh, we understand we have to urge that uh, we've got to keep ourselves safe. So, uh, as those who are joining us for the first time, we want to know and tell you that we still uh, honor our color code so that we may feel that uh, you remain safe in this uh, amen body as we gather together. Uh, let us continue to keep all of our sick and studying, uh, lifted up in our prayers. We know this is, again, according to myself and me, is our time to go out, uh, amen, to commune and fellowship. So we ask uh, that if there's others that need, amen, communion or need uh, for those to be sick, no, please let us know because we want to make sure that we can tell Sunday that we are, uh, amen, uh, available. Make sure that they are, amen, taking care of those who are sick and stressed in. Uh, amen. We want to make sure faithful brothers of integrity, uh, they are continuing lending help as so we have discussed. It's not just one time, amen, a year, but this is an ongoing effort. And if there are others who need assistance, please, there are forms in the vestibule. Uh, for more information, please be one of the members of the brotherhood, amen, as we're going forward. Uh, again, our bus ministry is, is available. Let us make sure that if there are some that we uh, transportation that you get in touch with the deacon within the church. Uh, amen. I thank God that last week, uh, for some of you who didn't know, we were gone. We were out of jail. And amen. I shared with you earlier that may be a Sunday. And that you'll look for me and I'll be gone. <laughs> amen. And last Sunday was that opportunity. Thank you for accepting my cousin, Brother John K. Matt, I heard that he did an awesome job for you. Amen. Amen. As we last week had a chance to celebrate 25 years. Amen. Of, of holy matrimony with my wife. And so we got back in early Saturday morning. And, and we thank you for being patient enough to give. Amen. Me an opportunity to take a break. Amen. And ready to go Sunday morning. Let us look ahead. As we know that we do have, amen, uh, not only our Bible study at 12 noon and 6.45, uh, but we ask you again to participate with us, whether we're in person, whether we're virtually. Uh, we want to grow with you. we got three more months in this uh, particular year, and so we want to uh, leave 2022 better than we found it. 
And so as else we do that, let's make sure that we are uh, continually studying, keeping our Bibles open, uh, amen, as we go forward. Uh, amen. Let's not forget, uh, again, Deacon Ministry will be meeting on Thursday at 6. Uh, amen. Follow WWT will be following our worship service. Amen. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, as we know, we have an upcoming agenda. Uh, amen. October the 28th will be the third district of churches. And again, we'll be fellowshipping on the third. So my good friend, uh, Pastor Cole, and the Mount Island CME Church on that fifth Sunday. And so if you forget that, there's some calendars in the front of the church. Uh, that has to have those dates in mind for us. And so let us continue as God has blessed us in our worship service. Uh, let us continue to go forward. Don't forget at the end of the month, uh, we will be uh, doing what we call Clean Up Week. Uh, we are trying to get some things together at our church. And so if any one of you have an opportunity during the last week of October to come and lend your uh, email support, we're going to be doing little painting, cleaning coffees. We're going to make sure that uh, we, we have our church looking better. Amen. Because of our efforts. And so we encourage you, if you see some things that we need uh, to make sure we concentrate on working on, uh, myself and the people are leading that effort. We want to make sure the pews are clean, that we want to make sure the coffee is clean, and that the floors are looking better than they have before. And we're going to not clean nobody. We're going to do it ourselves. Amen. And so we need your help. And if you're able body, come on down and help us to make sure that we get our church looking the way it needs to. And so we're looking forward to that effort as we go forward. Amen. It's time to move out of the way. This choir is not going to come back give us our money connection. Uh, then we will have an opportunity to come and bless you once again with what the Lord has in store for us. God bless you. May heaven shine and you give out that. Amen. You thought I was worth saving. So you can my life. You thought I was worth saving. So you can be up inside. You thought I was to die So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free, and I could be right, and I would tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So I could save my life, you thought I was worth saving. So you could be up and down. I'm <laughs> 
Everybody know that you were worth so much to God that according to the scripture, He allowed His Son to go up on an old rugged cross, and died for your sins and mine because He saw you and I were worthy. Come on, let's bless God. Amen. We, we continue, we continue this 
series on where are we now, moving from where we are. I want to just share with you by way of Daniel, in uh, Daniel chapter 6. There we find a familiar passage in Scripture, Daniel 6. We'll take it to a few verses here and we'll be going to read that and share with you what the Lord has for us. Daniel chapter 6. Let's move to verse number 20, just a few words, and I promise to get out of your head as it is. Amen. As it is the cousin, so if you can, so we have to just stand with us. Then again, at verse number 20, according to the sixth chapter of Daniel, he says, And when he came to the deep, cried with a lamp of the Lord unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God. Whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the life. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. For my God has sent his angel and has set the life of life. But they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocent was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then verse 23 says, Then was the king as he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. But Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no man of hurt was found upon him. And here is the text, because he believed in his God. That's all we need. You may take your seats because he believed in his God. Let us bow for a word of God. Eternal, most gracious master, we honor you. We praise you for all that you've already done. But God, it's because of your loving mercy, God, that we are not consumed, but early this morning. Woke us up, God, with a sea of love. Bless us, God, and allowed our going on to keep going. But now, God, as we approach your throne of grace, we come asking for peace and God. We come asking, dear Master, that you would be kind enough, God, to let every decrease as we live. Let God lift the place, be anointed by thee, God. Let nothing proceed out of your service, but all that you have commanded. Now, God, have thy way in this place. God, let the bread from you reach your people that they will know that it's not every best thing, but it is you that stands with us. It is in your precious name we be praised. Amen. Look at yeah, verse 23. The B clause says this, and so that you take it out of the deal. No matter what was found upon him because he believed in his God. I want to take you take something from this to thought uh, because he believed. Yeah. Let me say that again because I don't want you to be confused. Because he believed. Yeah. If you don't mind, encourage somebody next to you and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, because he believed. Amen, amen. Because of you, others, you may readjust. Because we believe, thank you, uh, amen. But we can thank you uh, so much, uh, brother. This is quiet, amen. For us in the spirit of God into this place, because because we believe. Guys, Michael Judge wrote a book uh, some years ago titled "Because I Believe." He wrote the book after enduring the sickness that, according to all medical professions, should have ended in life. But in this particular book, he talked about his journey uh, through a man that sickness and eventually he was healing. And in the concept of this particular book, he talked about the power of faith. In, in this book, he talked about uh, enduring some. I believe, but Luke, some of the most hard and difficult things he ever had to go through. But in his book, he talked about the more he went through, the more he prayed. The more difficult the situation got around him, the stronger his faith became. And in this book, as he reflected on his journey, he shared with the reader that it was by the power of his belief 
that he believed he got through. In other words, he did not, the examiner give credit to the medical procedure. It was important, uh, but he says that was not all that brought him through. He had wonderful doctors, and the doctors were there standing to give them all the knowledge he had. But he said, when I looked at all that I went through, he said, it was my belief in God that brought him through all that he went through. Ladies and gentlemen, great union, may I tell you to like this Michael German, many of us have faced some obstacles even in our own life. Our testimony may not be the same as Michael German, but we are too convinced that even in the challenges of our life, that there are, are often times our belief, our faith, that help us get through. Does that have anybody with me? Well, at times, even in our life, we may admit that, yes, what I went through took a toll on me. Yes, some people gave me up. And, and said, I wasn't going to make it. But, but he says, just like a lot of us sitting next to each other, that yes, I may have had some doubt, but because of my grown up faith, because I have a relationship with a God who is able, I, I'm able to say through it all, I believe in God. Maybe that may not be your testimony, but for a few of us who have grown up in our faith, who have now had a better relationship with God, we can admit I've had some financial situations, but I believe in God. I've had some sickness in my body, but I believe in God. I've had some problems on my job, but I kept believing in God. I had some people that said they didn't like me, but I kept on believing in God. And if I would be real enough, if you could take a seat every I could tell the whole thing. But because of my belief in God, I still am able to stop the victory that can't nobody do like the Lord. Maybe that after he began to look even this morning at Daniel, we began to see his own testimony. We began to see that Daniel is someone who's grown up in his family. Daniel is someone who had the same sentiment that, that through all that he had went through, he never stopped believing that God could make a way. How do we know? Because as we began to look at the text, we will find that there is the very bottom of the text we just see him saying, uh, as he began to declare, no harm, no hurt came to him because he said, I believe in God. I believe as we began to unpack this text, we began to find the reason why he can declare uh, that 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 meant nothing hurt me, nothing harm me, because I kept believing. But here it is for us. In the middle of this began statement, we find uh, his declaration came not out of a good night. But his declaration came after he had spent some time in the fire. Declaration came not because uh, he, he had people that liked him, but because there was a plot that was put in front of him that resulted in him being thrown for the life of Jesus. So what is it, what is it, Daniel, uh, that, that can help us to know uh, that, that you're not just saying words because it sounds good to me. You're not just telling us words because you want somebody to pat you on the back. But I believe his declaration, he's a certain uh, that he believed in God came out of his circumstances. And as we began to look at God's character, first of all, Daniel's faith was on track. Look at God, verse 20. The word of God says, And when he came to the king, it was the king here, he cried with a loud of the voice unto Daniel and said, King, uh, as he began to tell the Daniel, he said, You are servant of the living God, uh, whom you have said continually. Did your God show up? Was he able to deliver you from the life? But here I look again at the text because here it is, Daniel uh, now finds himself in a life. 
from things who had put him there in the lion's den. According to the text, he had had a restless night. He was one, perhaps one of Daniel's greatest allies. But the time of the plot against him, he had to put his good friend in a lion's den. And according to the church, he's, he's now wandering after a restless, sleepless night. He's asking the question, do your God show up? Because the God, the river you bang you from the lion den that you were born. After all, after all, we began to say, what's going on with this king? After all, here he is now, he's saying to Daniel, even though he don't see him, he's in the dark of dead. Lions have been with him all night long. And here he is now questioning Daniel, saying, Daniel, you've been a servant of the living God. But Daniel, you continue to pray, you, you continue to do all that you can. Did so God deliver you or not? It, 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 it's an understanding here because here is a king that seems on the surface as if he's coming to Daniel because he has a repentant heart. And what we began to see, but last is the fact that the same king who has been deceived, who has been tricked into our long trap, is now putting Daniel's God on track. Can I say this, my brother and sister, because he, he's not the first one to put a man a God on trial. Revelation 12 and 11 says that for when your faith is found and put on trial, the main reason is to prove your mistake. It's to prove that you are qualified as a believer when it comes to the things you're going to. And here, like a prosecutor, the dirty, this king wants to know if this God is real. If, if, if he real enough, I know you're saying about him, I know you pray God walk around with your big Bible, but is the God real enough to get him through this lion being and experience? Here, here and now, the king needs to know if he showed up. Or not. Bill, I, I want to share with you uh, that here is Daniel now. He's in this lion den. He's a Daniel that had prayed to God. He, he's a God of God. He, he, he's a Daniel that had risked his life for God. He remained true to his faith and he never gave up even when he came to the sea with his life. Here the king now wanted to know if your God still lives. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, there are oftentimes uh, some things that come in our lives that, that oftentimes people look at what you're going through and they're wondering if your God is still real. How is it you had lost your mind when the God seems to have gave you a matter of termination? How is it that you're still able to keep coming to church even though your doctor said he don't know what he's going to do? How is it that you can keep on paying your time when you don't know how your life bill is going to get paid? Somebody want to know how real is your life. I believe, Great Union, as we began to look at this Daniel, Daniel was the type of individual that the Bible said he was a man that prayed. He was a man that, that according to the text, he was a man of prayer. And because he was a man of God, he knew how to trust God in spite of his service. He knew how to hold on to God's unchanging hand, even when nobody else would support him. He knew how to just say no when things amen, didn't line up with God and what God wanted him to do. David told you and I, Brother Union, how important it is to know beyond the shadow of a doubt who your God is. He tells us that even when things get rough in our life, if you are a person of faith here and here, even though things may not seem popular to the world, you got to hold on. Even when you don't see God, you got to hold on. Even when things are stuck to get you, you got to hold on. Even when they want you to compromise your value, and even when it comes time when you find yourself losing out, you got to be able to say, I can hold on 
until God. So is there anybody in the church that had had to say some things in their life and you have to keep holding on to God's hand? You have to keep trusting God. I know the pain gets your body, but you're just trusting. I know the friends seem to be few, but you're just trusting. I know it seems like things didn't work out, but is there anybody that can admit I stopped trusting in God? So many of us, as we find here, the Bible says Daniel is in a lion's den. Having to face hurt and harm, and yet, according to the text, the king is asking the question Did your God show up? He's facing a lion's den, and, and can I tell you that, that every now and then we all will face the lion's den? Oftentimes, when we face the things that hurt and harm us, the things that even and cause us to not pull out all our hair, we got to recognize that some trials come to make you strong. Some lions did are bad, not only as a trial, but a test of your faith. And every now and then, my brother and sister, you got to be strong enough to say that my faith will outlast my trouble. That my faith will outlast my pain. So y'all don't talk to me. My faith will outlast my heartache, the misery that I'm going through. And every now and then, in God, you got to have trust in a God. My promise is never to leave you. The Lord will say, is there anybody on your feet to testify? I've been through some lying beings. And I didn't know when it was going to show up. I didn't know how you were going to show up. But I had enough faith to know that he will never leave me. Maybe now they go to you and sometimes uh, who you are in God will be put on track. And in those moments when there's a dying need for God to be on your side, can I tell you, hold on until God shows up. Sometimes holding on is hard to do, but can I ask the question for folks who are mature and grown up in the church, can you hold on until he shows up? Can you just keep the faith until he heals your body? Can, can you keep all and you may hold it to his unchanging hand until he stays with you so out of your life? Why is that important? Because when he shows up, he becomes a battle act. In the time of trouble, when he shows up, he becomes a man stronger in the time of storm. I wonder if there's somebody this morning can stay up and testify that I can't wait. There's no reason we're going to come, but I can't wait. That man really ain't going to say it, but I thank God that he's a God that is never too late. He's a God that specializes in things that seem impossible. Yes, when the union, they will say, we're going to die. That's the second movement of the text, because not only do we see the king questioning God, this Daniel, not only do we see that here Daniel has not responded but then there's a second movement of the court because we realize that Daniel's God delivered him. It's that verse 22. He said, Look at what Daniel said, For my God has sent his angels and set the line. Look at the at Daniel, because uh, here, here it is that the king, the prophet, the attorney, had already laid claim and said, Daniel, tell your God to live. Daniel asked us the question, and he said to him to settle the argument. He said, My God, he makes it personal. My God, the I am. My God, the Yahweh, who is strength. My God, who is at the night, he sent me in him. My God, who is Samma, y'all don't walk with me. He never leaves me. My God, the one that I call on in the middle of the night, he is the one. Set up the lion. Because he set up the lion, the mouth, he, he recognized, he recognized that no matter what the situation is, God is greater and more powerful than anything I know. Of. And can I tell you, my brother and sister, if God, amen, showed up for Daniel, won't he show up for you? You gotta understand that's nothing you and God can handle. If you didn't learn how to trust Him, and here we see evidence of the fact that God shows up in the middle of the situation. 
Because he sold that. He sold Daniel that he would hear God in the Lord. I heard Psalm 91 and 3 declare that he will deliver you from the fire of the fire, even from deadly testimony. He would hear in you. God is still delivering even today. And because God is a deliverer, can I tell you, he's a God of us. He's a God that protects. He's a God that will set the free. But you got to also have the faith in Him that He will show up. You got to really feel that on your feet can testify that my God will show up. I, I, I've been through some things in my life and I recognize He will. How do we know? Because the Bible said that according to David, God was the one that set the mouth of hungry life. He didn't just do it for a little while. But he didn't take it all night long. God kept the mouth of the lions. He was hungry lions. He was the guy who did it. But he said, but what? But what? This night. He made up the one they called God. This night, this lion who was ferocious, this lion who was a man eater, could not handle the fact that God was in the acquaintance. And can I tell somebody who's been dealing with your enemies, be careful. Don't cut the mind. Don't, don't lose the mind. Don't pull out all your hair. Just understand you have God with you. And the way you have God with you all day and all night, God will do you with you. There ain't anybody who has had an opportunity to know all day and night. All day and night, I've got God with me. And if God be for me, who can be but even the Bible says that not only uh, was he with them all night. But can I just testify that there are many times, even in our lives, uh, every week God delivers. If, if every day of your life when you get up, you just don't know that could have been you in the accident. That, that, that could have been you with a diagnosis. That, that could have been you with a heart attack or a stroke. But if there anybody in the church can just testify, I thank God that, that he kept me through hurt and harm and danger. I, I thank God that when I left home, amen, God has a provision for me to make it home. I thank God all these 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there could have been some things that killed me, but I thank God that he has protected me. And you. Things I heard of harm came to me. And I would believe that Daniel, even in my Holy Ghost imagination, could sleep all night. Because he knew God was on the situation. That's why, that's why I believe that somewhere I get the wrong Daniel slept God with that word. Not that time, uh, a couple days ago, uh, on my way back home, uh, again, a nine, ten hour flight. Uh, we were making our way across country, and the pilot came on the loudspeaker, and there uh, he began to talk about we, we will soon be experiencing uh, some bad weather. He says about 20 minutes, we're going to be going through some bad weather. Uh, it's going to get rocky, turbulence is going to come. Uh, but, but he said, don't worry. He, he, he said to you and I who were on the plane, everything is going to be all right. You don't make it through this because he says, uh, I, I'm able to get you through I, I looked at the statement because uh, when we eventually hit the turbulence and the rocket, the plane got the rocket, and turbulence started coming around us. I, I found a man lost. Nobody found. People were sick. The plane was rocking, turbulence was going forward. But, 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 but here it is nobody lost that. Nobody wanted, wanted to get off the plane and, and we were up on all kind of thousands of feet because they trusted that the power <laughs> would get them through. Can I tell you, Mr. Brady Union, the same pilot, amen, that got us through that trip. It is that same pilot that we have in the church and his name is God. And no matter how turbulent life gets, no matter how rocky things may get, you can go to sleep like that. Nothing that God is in control. Is there anybody in the church that that has been in the church? If I lost some sleep back in the day, but now I rest pretty good. Because I know that all my enemies are proud. I'm sleeping because God is in control. 
Even when I'm going through trials and tribulation, here it is. I don't need sleeping deals because I know who it is that orders my step. Can I tell you, they will step all night long. Because he knew who was challenging the ship of his life. And because of that, the Bible says he didn't worry. He didn't get anxious. But he trusted not in the past. But he trusted in a God that will deliver. You know, anybody in the church can testify. Yeah, I had some pain last night, but this morning I got up. And I trusted in my body. Yes, I had some situations financially, but when I got up this morning, I trusted that God will make a way. Can I tell you what happens? The Bible says that while he was trusting in the God who was in control, he recognized that God came out of it. Nobody knew. So according to the case, the Bible said that what should have harmed Daniel, truly uh, what should have hurt Daniel, the Bible says God healed him. That God handled whatever situation came his way. David comes to mind in Psalm 18. Why? Because according to the case of Luke, he said, the Lord is my rock. He's my fortress, and here is my favorite work, and he's also my deliverer. And because David had the same testimony as Daniel, he showed you and I that God can handle any situation. That no matter how overwhelming things may become in your life, no matter how big your problem, uh, no matter how difficult or how hard things may seem, God can make a way out of nowhere. Right about the name of Catherine Gates. Comes to mind because when she began to look at her difficult situation, she said, Her God is big. And because her God is bigger than any challenge that comes in her life, she said, It is that God who, amen, brings peace in the middle of chaos. And I wonder if there anybody that has the same testimony as Catherine did in the worst of situations, God brought peace. In, in the middle of all the children giving me heartache, God brought me peace. And the man not knowing what the doctor will make the call, God brought peace. Is there anybody that can raise their hand and say, Thank God for the peace that surpasses every understanding? Because when you have that peace of God, can I tell you, you can get through anything. Yet, yet I, I know the economy, I know the economy looks one way, I know they got an election coming up. But is there anybody woke up this morning and I got a peace? That they let me know that all things will work together for good. I got a peace. That they let me know that even when I'm going through some things, my God is able to deliver. So, can I tell you, my brother and sister, that God is always in that? He is not a part of God, He is not a dormant or distant God, no matter what pain or suffering. But you may be through right now in your life, can I tell you, God has promised to deliver you. And not only will He deliver you, but can I tell you, He will deliver you from every struggle. He will deliver you from every trial that you go through. But He is to carry out of the test. You got to believe that He made it. Not only do we see, first of all, that Daniel, God delivered him, but we also discovered in the text that Daniel faith. Was on fire. the third and final movement of the text that I tell with you is that not only do we see that, but Daniel's favor followed after. Look at verse 23 for the writer's tale. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. And not only was he glad for him, but he commanded the day to take Daniel up out of the bed. Look at what happened here. Well, we find that, that now, because of who Daniel was, but because he was a praying man, not only did God deliver him, but now we see the evidence of favor on his life. How do we know? Because when we begin to look at it, we realize that any time God shows the light, any time God connects with us, any time he shows approval, then here it is, we are under his faith. 
And I want to suggest to you, Grady Junior, that because, amen, God, amen, the light is connected and showed approval, I believe he's walking now in the favor of God. How do I know? Because when we look at it, we realize that here it is, God not only watched over him, that God not only did not he let him hurt or harm come on it, but we realize how the favor of his life not only impacted him in the lion's den, but we also see the reaction of the truth. But we don't understand, Felicia, that it's one thing for God to show up in the middle of your situation. But when God allows that favor not only to get you out of it, but it starts to follow you everywhere you go. Then you know the other side of a doubt is not be God. How do I know that you watch what happened? The queen, according to the text, was extremely black. That they were the ceiling in the original text, meaning Leon. It means that the king was jumping for God. I looked at it again, right? Because according to the text, the same thing that saw him in the lion's den is now jumping for joy. You missed it. Let me rewind it. The same king that had passed the decree and said to him, he should not pray that he should be thrown into the lion's den is now jumping for joy because the God that was a question mark has now delivered him. What I tell you, Brother Junior, is not as no what happens in the lion's den, but it's about the fact that people see that it was God. You can sit around and talk about God all day, but when they can see the victory, when they can see what God can do in your life, that's when God began to show how He is saved with you. I don't know, because according to the text, the Bible said not only was he jumping for joy because Daniel survived, but I came to tell you the favor of God was willingly with him because he had not only rescued him, but now he's allowed the king to find favor in him. But one thing I realized, brothers and sisters, in the text said that once he began to say to him at the other his door, he says, command them, get him out of the day. Not only did he tell him to get out of the day, but the Bible said even his enemies were found out. I'm the same enemy that is brought against The same enemy that wanted a man to see his demise. Well, according to the text, Lord, it the same being that they had for that. But instead of Pharaoh following them, instead of God delivering them, the Bible says they were thrown into the den, but according to the text, they were devoured. The lion's But I'm telling you, brothers and don't, don't, ain't nothing lose your mind. Because the enemies are coming against you. But none of God will never let the righteous be forsaken. Nobody's seed won't have to beg for bread. Because if you are the righteous of God, don't I tell you, God will protect you. And God will make a way for you. And we found that all of the times with the enemies were thrown in again. But according to the text, the Bible says that Daniel, that same one, that had been praying to his God, Daniel, that same one that, who was thrown in the lion's den. According to the text, the Bible says, seven that, that according to the text, he was fucked. Everything he did was fucked. Everywhere he went, it prospered. And can I tell you the reason why he was able to prosper was not because he changed the church, not because he had a melodic voice to sing in the choir. The reason he was able to prosper, the reason he was able to go forward, is because he believed in God. And I think it is more than four thousand miles later to tell you that God is still a God that can be trusted. Even if you are there, you can believe it. I don't know if I'm talking about all the words that 
Jesus is all. I tried him for myself. And we all have everybody else in there. Tell me to get that baby power in. I can't be glad I learned that there ain't nobody in there. Yeah, do me like the Lord. I don't know that they don't have it. The Bible will take care of the Lord. Why does it all have somebody to carry on the day? But favor is not fair. And I tell you, the joy of that, but if you're not the righteous of God, it's not a man you're not going to have. But the two or three people have, we can testify that every now and then I see the favor of God following after me. But I'm not here to be telling you, man, to eat my soul. I heard James and said, the Lord will deliver me. I know what the Bible says. I don't 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 know what the Bible says. I'm <laughs> 
testimony. If you believe in God, God should be here to tell you, keep holding on. Keep trusting. Keep believing in a God that promised never to leave you no the table. And for those who are struggling even with your faith, who are struggling even with the things that you're going through, I came to tell you, God is a deliverer. God is someone you can believe in no matter how or what the doctors have said to you. But we got to learn to trust in you. And part of that trust starts with your ability to get to know Him. To find yourself in the right relationship with Him. Maybe for some who have not yet found that relationship, God says, I'm still available. I'm still able. I'm still willing to, to walk with you. I'm still able to do anything with you. And maybe as you open the doors of the church, if you have an opportunity, if you don't know him for yourself, today is a good day to get to know him. If you've had your own personal life, then you don't know. There are some things that came against you that should have brought you. There are some things that came against you that should have made you give up in your life then. But somebody around you can testify that the God I serve is the deliverer. And if you want to have that God in your life, God says, come to me. Come and allow him to be a part of your life. As you open the doors of this church, you have a chance to come. Whether you come by letter, whether you come by your own admission, you have an opportunity to come. For those who join with the church, you have a chance to get to know it. All you got to do is pray a simple prayer, God, I accept you. God, I want you to be a part of my life. I believe that you allowed, that you died for my sin. But I also believe that you got a very long Sunday morning for my sin. And if you pray that prayer and you believe in God and you confess Him, the Bible says you are saved. Now comes the hard part when you unite yourself and go to work for God. That is what God has in store for us. As we open the doors of the church to you, you have a chance now to come. As we stand to our feet, as we trust God, as we begin to share with him, I'm gonna hide behind the man. I'm gonna hide. Let me open this up. Hide behind the man. I'm gonna hide. I need to I need I'm 
On that particular night, Jesus shared with his disciples, I need you to go. And as you go, I need you to make way to have yet again an opportunity for me to eat. And just, they went, the Bible says, to have a communion. And when he prepared it to be the Bible says, and after they had eaten, the Bible says that Jesus raised the bread to the air. And as he began to raise the bread to the air, he began to break it in his hand. He said, I'll him as he sees this bread broken so sad my body. He knew that in order for a full remission of sin to occur, that he needed to share blood. The body that he raised and stuff, and he began to pour the wine. As he began to pour the wine, he said, I'll them, this is my blood that shall be shed for the remission of sin. He understood that he was doing the shedding of blood, the eating of the bread. Said it wasn't enough. Paul comes to mind when he says to us that we do not eat the Greek damnation, Greek wordly, unto our faith. In other words, he was saying with us that, that even all the things that we do, let's not make it just something that we do, but make it a part of who we are. In the middle of that, we began to establish them that we need to make sure that we're worthy to partake of the bread of God. And as he began to establish them, the things he said to them, we got to make sure that we move some things out of the way, that we will be made worthy of what God is doing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, perhaps even in this day, maybe there are some things that are separating you and God. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's the things that uh, we trust in. Maybe it is some things that uh, we, we hold in grudges or we jealous of envy for one another. And these things that are, don't, don't, don't partake of all of this thing you He says he has an advocate by the name of Jesus that will take all of the higher things on your flesh back to God. Yeah. Once he takes you back to God, God will be able to pass it into the lake of forgiveness. I want to share with you that we are in this occasion now with a God who is able to catch everything that's not of him into the lake of forgiveness. I want, I have plans for the big that we pray for you. But this is perfect. This is between you and God. 
that God would do the word. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare now to eat up bread and drink of the wine, part of our role now is to be the word of what God is doing. How do we do that? By going to God ourselves. This is not about sin, this is not about the spouse. This is about you and God. You're angry with God, this is about you and God. If, if there are some things that you and God are not together on, this is that time that you and God can get together and He can make you work. So we want to take an opportunity. This is the time of prayer that we have an opportunity to offer to God that He may be much more of what He's trying to do. Let's pray and meditate and pray about what God can do. Yeah. As I look to my right, has anybody been omitted? Even greater now. As I look to the middle, has anybody been omitted? Even greater now. As I look to my left, has anybody been omitted? Even greater now. And as I be in essence, will come join us. And you know, they'll come on up and join with us. Okay. Oh, the drink is where to eat it out of the world. Oh, the eating out of the world. Oh, the eating out of the world. You are a good man. You are a good man. Jesus stood before them. He raised his bread to the air. He said unto them, This is my body. Eat this is all me as you can. He remembers to me. He blessed it and said, Eat. He raised his cup to the air. He said unto them, This is my blood. Drink it as all me as you can. He remembers to me. The Bible says, They drunk every night. He said unto them, As you go forward, as you understand that God has done such a wonderful thing of sending His Son to die for us. We do you thank you so much, Amen, for being part of the service this morning. We pray that something is said and done to encourage your heart throughout the week. And we pray that as you go through, and remember God is still a deliverer. And that because God is delivered, it is our task now to do all we can. As we come to the end of our service, Amen, part of our role now is we transition. To understand that God also believes in us and gives us an opportunity to bring as a part of our worship things that are offered unto Him. This is our time now for you to bring 
and to those who are with us, who are joined with us in person, that we're going to walk and give our freedom and offerings back to God. And also for those who join with us virtually, you can join with us on our website, and on our website, and on our website, and on our or you can mail it in. So you can never give you an opportunity to have access to the blessings of God, we pray that you would do it now. For those who are with us, uh, as we're standing for our feet, we will begin with our service. We bless God for each of the ways our business field and family. Thank you again for being a part of the Great Union Church today. Uh, we pray, we pray that your week will go wonderfully this week and that you will join with us on Wednesday night, amen, all Wednesday evening as we matriculate, amen, out of your service, amen. My brother, this is God bless you, may heaven stand on you, it will be our prayer. Amen. As we declare, as we declare, I need you. You are the Lord. Stand with me.